I rejoiced with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Teach me, Lord, the way of your decrees, that I may follow it to the end. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 133 Look how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like the precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew from Hermon, running down on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commands this blessing, life to eternity. The Word of the Lord. A reading from Judges chapter 16. Sometime after that, Samson fell in love with a woman from the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The Sarans of the Philistines approached her and said, Persuade him to reveal where his great strength comes from, and how we may overpower him, tie him up, and humiliate him. Each of us will give you eleven hundred shekels of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what the source of your great strength is, and how you can be tied up in order to humiliate you. Samson answered her, If anyone ties me up with seven new bowstrings that have not yet been dried, I will become weak and be like any other man. So the Sarans of the Philistines brought her seven new bowstrings that had not yet been dried, and she tied him up with them. She had men hiding in the room, waiting to ambush Samson. And she said to him, Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he snapped the bowstrings as easily as a flax thread that was scorched when brought near fire. So the source of his strength was not revealed. Then Delilah said to Samson, Look, you made a fool of me and told me lies. Now please tell me how you can be tied up. Samson answered her, Actually, if anyone ties me up with new ropes that have never been used for work, I will become weak and be like any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him up with them. Then she said to him, Philistines are upon you, Samson. There were men hiding in the room waiting to ambush Samson, but he tore the ropes off his arms as if they were thread. Delilah said to Samson, So far you have made a fool of me and told me lies. Tell me how you may be tied up. So he said to her, If you weave the seven locks of my hair into the fabric of a loom and fasten them with a pin, I will be as weak as any other man. After she had waited for him to fall asleep, Delilah took the seven locks of his hair and wove them in the fabric of a loom. She fastened them with the pin and said to him, Philistines are upon you, Samson. But Samson woke up from his sleep and pulled out the pin from the loom along with the fabric. She said to him, How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? This makes three times you have made a fool of me and you have not told me where your great strength comes from. This was how she tormented him with her words day after day, and nagged him until he was sick to death of it. Finally, he told her everything in his heart. He said to her, 
A razor has never touched my head, because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God from the womb of my mother. If I am ever shaved, my strength will desert me, and I will become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he told her everything in his heart, she sent for the Sarans of the Philistines, saying, Come back one more time, for he has poured out his heart to me. The Sarans of the Philistines came up to her and brought the silver in their hands. Delilah let Samson fall asleep on her lap. Then she called for a man and shaved off the seven locks of his head. She began his humiliation because his strength had left him. She said, Philistines are upon you, Samson. He awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as I have time after time and I will shake myself free. But he did not realize that the Lord had left him. The Philistine seized him, gouged out his eyes, brought him down to Gaza and restrained him with bronze shackles. He had to grind grain in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow after it had been shaved. Meanwhile, the Sarans of the Philistines gathered to make a great sacrifice to their god Dagon and to celebrate. They said, Our god has given our enemy Samson into our hands. When the people saw him, they praised their god. Our god has given our enemy into our hands, the devastator of our land, who has caused the death of many of us. When they were feeling good, they said, Send for Samson so that he can provide amusement for us. They summoned Samson from the prison, and he served as their entertainment. They made Samson stand between the pillars. He said to the young man who led him by his hand, Put me where I can touch the pillars that support the building, so I can lean upon them. The building was full of men and women, as well as all the Sarans of the Philistines. On the roof were about three thousand more men and women, watching Samson as he was amusing them. Samson called out to the Lord. He said, Lord God, remember me, I pray. Give me strength, I pray, this one more time, O God. Let me get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes, in one act of vengeance. Samson then grasped the two central pillars supporting the building. He leaned against them, one with his right hand and one with his left. Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. He pushed with all his strength, and the building fell upon the Sarans and upon all the people who were inside. The Philistines he put to death when he died were more numerous than those he had put to death during his lifetime. The Word of the Lord. A reading from Galatians chapter 4. I beg you, brothers, become like me, for I also became like you. You did me no harm. You know that, because of a weakness of the flesh, I preached the gospel to you the first time, and you did not despise or disdain the test my flesh gave you. Instead, you welcomed me as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus. So where is this blessed attitude of yours now? Yes, I can say for a fact that if it were possible, you would have plucked out your eyes and given them to me. So then have I become your enemy by telling you the truth? Those people are eager to win you over, but not in a good way. Rather, they want to alienate you so that you will be eager for them. But it is always a good thing to have someone eager in a good way not just when I am present with you. My children, I am suffering birth pains for you again until Christ is formed in you. I wish I were present with you now and could change my tone because I am perplexed about you. Tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you really listening to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and one by the free woman. However, the son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, but the son by the free woman was born through a promise. 
These things can be used as an illustration. Namely, the women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai bearing children into slavery. This is Hagar. You see, this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and she corresponds to present-day Jerusalem because Jerusalem is in slavery along with her children. But the Jerusalem that is above is free. She is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, barren woman who does not give birth. Break forth and shout for joy, woman who does not suffer birth pains. Because the barren woman has more children than does the woman who has a husband. Now you brothers like Isaac are children of the promise. But just as back then the one who was born according to the flesh persecuted the one who was born according to the spirit. So this is also the case now. But what does the scripture say? Throw out the slave woman and her son, because the son of the slave woman will certainly not receive the inheritance with the son of the free woman. For this same reason, brothers, we are not children of a slave woman, but of the free woman. The Word of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. Spare us, Lord, from the lies of the devil and the attacks of our conscience. Comfort and save us in your patient compassion. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Guide us, Lord, to the wisdom of your word and the power of your promises. Take away our confusion and doubt. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Hear us, Lord, when we come to you in prayer. Make us confident to take you at your word and to follow you in faith. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Empower us, Lord, to walk in your ways and live in your truth. Fill us with your love, that we may love you and one another. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Almighty God, by your Spirit, the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified. Receive our prayers for all members of your Holy Church, that in their vocations and ministries they may truly serve and honor you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen.